What's going on guys? Stevie from the Minmasters here and Tom from the State of Real. And we're, and we're brothers. brothers. And today we're going to replace that rusted spring tower. So my brother is an OBS enthusiast just like me and he's got this. What year is this? This is a 94 but it's way more mint than my brother's truck. <laughs> Very mint. We got a lot of good mintness going on in this one <laughs> and uh we're going to replace some of the mintness in here the spring tower looks like a bag of potato chips so we're going to replace it with some nice shiny matte shiny new ones here they got some new shocks in the box and uh we're going to get going on this so just a quick uh overview if you watched one of my videos on how to remove your spring without a spring compressor you're basically going to jack up the frame and you're gonna let your suspension droop that allows you to take the top nuts off that hold your spring in so that nut and another one and basically you let the suspension droop the spring falls out and you can get at that nut no spring compressor is required and we can actually take a good stab at that spring tower so we're gonna get on it beer break mm. we are at the point that you're all interested in and so we've cut the shock out the top nut was kind of rusted on there and we've removed this top bolt and of course that one broke off which is pretty normal but you won't need that because you're getting some new towers so the jacks under here and when I loosen up the jack everything should come out all right so it's a little stuck in there so wait you see it's getting pretty loose up there oh she's bobbing and weaving now oh yeah out there yeah that's good yep Jeez. so at this point you can use some spring compressors to get a little further on a two-wheel drive truck a lot of times they just fall right out and it just makes the whole job easier so we're gonna get that thing out and we're gonna get to grinding also quick little thing here you notice we are wearing a lot of PPE so face shield we're doing some grinding hearing protection because we don't want to be yelling at our wives when we're 50 and uh, you know we got to protect some of these faces so make sure you wear some safety gear we're gonna get to it I thought we'd bring you guys back you can see the top of the coil spring is now out and one thing I forgot to leave out if you do have a sway bar disconnecting the sway bar will allow this to come out on its own otherwise you'll either have to kind of muscle it out or use a spring compressor. I muscled it out. A lot of muscle here so we, <laughs> he went that route so just be careful and now what you'll do is now you have the top of the coil spring open we're gonna fish some extensions down here with the nut and we're gonna do that nut now I usually have to know off the top of my head it's about an inch and an eighth and we'll find out if the same is for a four-wheel drive truck but you'll just get that one out and this whole thing will come out nice and easy all right so spring is out time to go after the potato chip bag here so we've got a grinder here set up with a cut wheel, all right? So we're gonna kinda try to do here is we're gonna go in here and try to cut it from the side. Once we get the majority of the, the head of the rivet off, then we'll put an actual grinding wheel on and we'll grind it down to a nice little flat surface and then we'll punch them through to the other side. And we're gonna go around, we're gonna do every single one. So there's these two, these two, and there's uh, one, uh, there's a couple underneath here. There's You'll right also here. need to unbolt this bumper here too that is attached to this as well and that once it's loose we'll figure out the brake line so we have the thing ground off and now it's time to hit it through so old head stud that we don't care about big sledgehammer this is awkward. And the guns. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You see, he's kind of in a weird spot to do all this. So if you have an air chip, kind of make this job. Oh, there we go. Out. But there you go. Almost through. Just need to grind the stud down a little bit. Oh, yep. Pops right up. through. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, just like that, we have one rivet out. And that took us probably less than two minutes combined. So if you're trying to gauge how long it takes to do this, there you go. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna knock all the ones out and we'll bring it back when it's time to pull this sucker off. What did I miss? All right, he's got it down. I was away, had a uh, 2 p.m. appointment with Mrs. Murphy. You know, she only likes one and two appointments, so this is number two appointment. But as you can see, we have the spring tower off and potato chips. Look at the quality of this one. I mean, that's a real muncher, all right? One thing, and, one thing I do want to say though, Steve, is Getting into these rivets, um, I did use a hard wheel instead of an 045 wheel. And what I did is I put a little slit right in the center, and then I worked one side until you know it was pretty flat, and then I worked the other side. That way, I'm not flying all over this round nut or whatever, uh, or the rivet head. Um, that really made quick work of all of the rivets. And then once I uh, ran through all the rivets, and the last one was down here, which was probably the most difficult because there isn't much axis here. I just took the sledgehammer and smashed this guy and popped it off. So I would suggest doing it that way if you guys are gonna attack this. Definitely made short work of it. Yeah. For the rest of the English speaking world, an 045 wheel and the other wheel, one's a cutoff wheel and one's a grinding wheel. One's thin and then one's thick. So we would say this is a cutoff wheel. Yep, 045. And, and then this is? We would say this is a grinding wheel. Yep. So. That's your two choices of disc to attack this. So now we're gonna look at this brake line. <clears throat> so there's a little clip, as you can see it there, that clip's gonna pop off. And then we have to negotiate uh, the brake line from the back, back and um, we're gonna have to pull it through, okay? It's a little challenging, but you will have to disconnect your, your brake line. So not only is this a cut and hammer out job. This is also semi brake bleed job as maybe, well. Maybe brake fab line job. Yeah. So we're gonna get to it and we'll bring you back. All right guys, so the uh, spring tower is off. We got it right here. And man, this thing is like chips and salsa bad. I mean, it's just cracking. Let's see, can we, can we get it? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's like a big scoop. There's a hole. Right there, straight through. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, there he is. Yep, so we're happy to see that one go to the scrap heap. Now, you had your brake line go through this, and so you'll actually go to the back side and unscrew it, And but this will still be in place, and it's because you gotta pull that clip. Now, you've got a little secret here for the rest of the world to know. Yeah, one thing that I do when uh, I split a brake line you take the female end and you're usually close to your caliper or whatnot that has a bleeder nipple on it and that bleeder nipple has a cap. And just to keep your brake fluid from all leaking out, you can actually take that cap off of your caliper and just shove it right in there and it'll keep the rest of your brake fluid from leaking out and you having to buy one more thing to get your truck up and running after you do all this work. There you go guys, secrets, secrets. So we're gonna smash these back through, all right? And we're at a perfect point to put the new tower on. And trust me, from here on out, very simple job. We're just gonna put it back in. We're gonna put our bolts through, tighten those things down, and we should be putting the spring and shock back in here, and it's going to be sweet. So we're gonna get to it. So with the spring tower off and the rivets knocked out, we just kind of cleaned up the frame with a wire wheel or a cup wheel. And uh, we're just adding a little co few coats of paint, so, you know, give it some longevity and make it nice and black and fresh. So, yeah. So let's uh, go over a few things real quick while the paint is going on. So we have our spring tower here and you have all your appropriate holes for your bolts. And we have bolts right here. So we have some grade eight hardware and some nuts. Now, if you happen to order one of these and it doesn't come with a packet of bolts, I recommend you get some graded hardware 
and I'm pointing at this one because this one didn't come with any, and you will buy a bolt, a lock washer, and a nylon lock nut, and that's how you ensure, you ensure these will never ever come off. I know it's a little redundant, lock washer and a uh, nylon locking nut, but this thing is gonna hold some major suspension components in, and you want it to stay. So while I'm over here gabbing, I might as well grab this and a little pack of the bolts and bring it over so that we can put it in. So here's the part you've all been waiting for, finally bolting this guy in here. So he just held it up and I started handing him these nuts. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to thread them through and tighten them on. Unfortunately, these didn't come with any torque specs, so I don't have those for you. But what does the machinist say? Look it up on Google or do like the Germans do and put it good and tight. There you go. So good and tight and uh, these should stay there. And uh, don't forget, you'll have one underneath and one on the other side. So here we are guys, the spring tower is in and man, what a world of difference it is from the beginning. I mean, a fresh coat of paint on the frame on the spring, new shock, you got those nice shiny silver bolts. I mean, this thing is gonna ride so nice and we don't have to worry about the spring shooting its way through the old tower and of course through the hood. Not sure if that's what actually happens, but this one definitely was Swiss cheese enough for it to happen. So a couple of things I need to mention before we let you go. My brother, Tom over here, who's busy cleaning up his tools, he has uh, a channel called The State of Real. A lot of cool stuff on there. He has a 97 Prelude that is sitting out the streets. Turbocharged. Yeah, turbocharged, it's 450 horsepower um, on a four cylinder. And uh, Steve was actually part of the motivation of me starting my own channel. There you so, go. Here we are. I have a build on how I made this entire garage by myself in the middle of the winter. Yep. <laughs> and what's best of all is what he's got sitting in there. That T-Bird there, 67? 64. 64, okay, a little off there. And a nice big block. And that is the original big block that's in there. So he'll be working on that and there's, he'll have a lot of cool videos and pictures and updates on that as well. So guys, that's all for me and for my brother Tom over here. We got some beers to go drink and obviously enjoy the truck. So please subscribe to our channels, The State of Real, The Minute Masters. And uh, if you want to see any more of my videos, go uh, you know where click to come. on the cards. Yes, right you know here. where to come, right here. <laughs> so see ya. Later, guys.